Hello everyone, my name is Mike and in this video I'll show you how you can solve normal captcha in Puppeteer using the 2Captcha API. So yeah, let's get it started. So first of all, I want to mention that normal captcha is an image like this one right here that contains distorted but human readable text. So this is a human readable text within the image, but it looks distorted, but we can still read it. To solve the CAPTCHA, user has to type the text from the image and just click a submit button. So this is what we'll be doing in this video is giving, we will basically download the image, send it to the API and the API will give us the letters and then we will automatically type the letters here and click submit. Before we continue further, I'd like to mention that this is this video is a continuation of my Puppeteer tutorial series. So if you haven't watched my previous episodes and you'd like to know more about Puppeteer, click up here and you should be redirected to my playlist, which will include this video right here. So yeah, let's continue. I want to mention that 2 captcha API is a paid solution while it's cheap it's still paid so let me show you how much it costs and if I scroll down here you will see my rate per thousand for my normal captcha this is what we are solving today but I have made a video for recapture as well the previous video from this one right here so my rate per 1000 is just about 80 cents 80 cents USD okay so that's how much it costs so for every thousand souls you use this api for so every 1000 images you send to this api you will be charged about 80 cents so first of all they don't have a node.js solution they only include a python solution php and more for this video we will be using their python api which is really simple to use and I'll show you how you can do that as well. So first of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and download Python, link in the description. So just download Python, make sure when you open the installation, check the path, install to path, so you can be able to use Python from the command line. So I'll copy this code, go right here, create a new file, let's call it to captcha.py copy the code and we only have to install one module, one package and that's to capture but because we don't, we cannot do pip install to capture we have to, it's, it's different, it has a different name so give me one second so as you'll see right here, the package name is actually to capture slash python so I'll copy that command right here. By the way, link in the description as well. And now I'll, I'll open terminal. As you'll see, I have connected Python with my Visual Studio code. And I'll just copy paste the command. And it says requirement already satisfied because I have already downloaded it. But for you, it should just download it. And it works currently for Python 3.10. So if it doesn't work for you, by the time you watch the video, just install a previous version of Python 3.10 works. So try that one. So if you haven't already done, sign up for 2Captcha API, link in the description as well. After you sign up, just deposit minimum $3 and you will get your own API key by going to this page right here, scroll up and you should see your API key right here just copy it and replace it right here so before we make the changes let's start with the node.js part with the puppeteer part so I'll create a new file and call it normal .js. and now I'll go to puppeteer in npm so link again down in the description and you should be redirected to this page. First thing you need to do is run npmi puppeteer dash dash save on your folder. So let me go ahead and do that. 
So I'm putting my pop, pop it here. That's that's a save. This will take some time, so have that in mind because it's downloading Chromium. So while that downloads, let's go here and copy this example or copy it here. And now, first of all, we want to replace our destination with the demo page. So let me copy this one right here, paste it here. Delete the screenshot function because we will not be using that. Also, comment for now browser to close because we don't want the browser to close. And also add an option which will be headless false because I want the browser to be open and visible. So we don't want the URL though because the URL should be always the same for other websites. So if I refresh the page, it's still the same captcha. But for other websites, the captcha will always update. So now instead of getting the URL and downloading the image from there, we will tell the script to download the image directly from, from the image currently displayed. So let me show you how we can do that. So first of all, I'll go to network, delete all the requests, refresh the page, and I want to show you something. So right here we have the image URL, and if I copy it, here, and paste it here on the filter, you shall see on our requests, we are getting the image. So that's how we will get the image that is currently displayed and not a random image. So we will get it from the requests. So I'll go here and we have to add something. First of all, before we even visit a page, we have to add this function and, we, and that will do page on and we will do response. We will use it synchronous and we will get a response. And from that, what we can do is const image URL and we want to filter all the requests by the URL. But first of all, we have to get each response URL. So this is how we get the URL from the response. So page on response runs every time we have a new response and we just want to check for the image response in the image request with the response. Now we want to check two things. First of all, if actually just one thing, if image URL equal to this URL right here, which never changed, if it does, or what we can do, say it changes, but like a part of it stays the same. Let's say this one stays the same for us, but for you, maybe this part stays the same always. What you can do is if the URL dot includes and the part of the URL. So what we can do is delete this and just skip this one right here. You can check which part stays the same. So if it does, then we want to start downloading the file. And to do that, I'm going to copy an example and replace your things. So we want to set a file name. So let's see file name equal to this one right here. If you are going to download multiple captures, what you can do is just put a dynamic number at the front. So let me do that. Okay, so let's do right here let file name equal to first we, it will be nothing and then we will update it here so we can get the dynamic file name right here because it might not be the same if you are getting multiple now that i set a file name i can create a stream with the file name so what i'm doing here is i tell response.buffer and then from the response I start downloading the image right here. Of course, I don't want to save it right here, but in a folder, so we can do a folder name captures. And I can do captures plus the file name. Now I want to be checking when the file is successfully downloaded and then send a request to my Python code to get the code. 
So what I will do is add another variable that says let file downloaded equal to false. But once it's downloaded, we will do equal to true. Format it. Now that we did that, we want to go down here and say while file not downloaded. Actually, we have to add one more variable, variable and that will be to let updated image to false. And we want to say while the image is not updated, run the while. So while it's not true, start checking if the file is downloaded. So if file name, and we can set that to false as well, if file name plus file downloaded. So if the file name is updated and the file is downloaded, we want to start getting code. For now, that will be empty. So let's leave it like that. But we have to add one more thing. So on the while, we don't want that to run like super fast. We want to give it some space, let's say a few milliseconds. So we will add a slip function. So let me get that right here. So that says a timeout. So what we can do is use that function right here and say await sleep and let's say sleep for 100 milliseconds. So this will be checking every 100 milliseconds if the file is downloaded. And now if the, the file is downloaded and the file name exists, we want to say updated image to true because we don't want the while true to run anymore. And then we want to do something here. For now, let's do console the log file name and file downloaded. Image URL, I don't think we need that anymore. Let's delete it since we're using response again to do it more dynamically. Now let me rerun the app and see if it works. Okay, so we got an error. Let's see what it is. FS is not defined. Okay, let's define it. So let's go up here and say const FS equal require FS. This is for storing the image. You don't have to npm install that because it's already installed. It's pre-installed in Node.js. So let's see. Okay, it says it's downloaded. So if I go to CAPTCHAs, there it is. Let me open it and there's the image. Great. So step number one is done. Now st for step number two, we have to go on the Python code and make the changes. So for the path to the image, we want to get the path from the arguments we will provide from the Node.js script. So I'll replace the URL with this one right here, which gets the second argument. So first, first argument would be to capture.py, the file of the Python code. And the second argument will be the file location, which we'll provide to the Python code. Now, one more thing we have to do is instead of doing that right here, we have to run this to stop the Python code. And also what we are doing here is trying to get the result if there's an error, stop it. If there is not, again, stop it. But before it stops it, I want it to print the result in a string. And of course, replace your API key. And as I see that, that's it for Python. Now, back on Node.js, I'll copy a code which runs the Python code. So what we are doing here is we open a terminal not visible and we are running Python and then the Python file name, which will be to captcha.py. And here we provided the file name, which is this one right here, the argument, the second argument. So it starts from zero. So this is the second argument and this is the file name. And now here we are listening for data. So what we are saying right here is get the data 
translate that to a string because it's not a string and replace the quotes with double quotes single quote with a double quote so i have to add a variable named code so let's do let code equal to false so let's test this for now so before we continue by writing the code on the input it has and clicking submit to check if it worked let's first check if we actually get the code i can do console.log and then the code so let's test that by the way have in mind the captcha is not solved immediately it might take a few seconds to a minute okay so as you'll see it gives me false which shouldn't be what it should give me but actually it is so again like we did for the image we have to check when the code is updated so let me add another variable but for the code this time and what i'll do is while but for the code while code isn't updated sleep for 100 milliseconds make sure you include that and now what i will do is if code so if there is something in code but not false i'll cancel the log code of course make sure you set the updated code to true before you cancel the log or before you do anything because you don't want this to run twice now let me delete that's this one and rerun the code so for some reason a lot of time passed and i didn't get anything so let me go here stop the app and go okay so it worked now so what the issue was is python 3.10 isn't working for the solution i tried it with python 3.7.9 and it works so actually make sure you install 3.7.9 instead of any of the other versions and it should work fine as you'll see here it works so let me remove that so what i had to do here is because i use multiple python versions i just got the python.exe from python 3.7 and gave it the file location here as instead it's it runs python 3.10 by default so yeah let's continue so now that we get the code, let me get back to the capture demo page, click inspect. And now what we want to do is type the answer right here. So I'll get the input class name or actually let's do the ID. And, and what we will do is tell Puppeteer to type on that field the code. So to do that, what we can do is do await page our wait page dot type then we give it the selector make sure you put a hashtag for id or a dot for the class name and here we will do the code and that's it now after doing that we can tell it to sleep like for 100 milliseconds so basically for other pages if you do it really fast to give it the code and then click submit in a millisecond give it the code and click submit immediately it might detect you as a bot so we give it some space you can do more if it does detect you and then what we can do is await page dot click and we can click the submit button so let's go back find the check and get the get the class name of it so it has multiple but we can just use the first one yep okay so let's do that put a dot for, because it's a class name and that's it so now let's test it cls to clear the terminal and rerun it it takes some time to solve it and there we go so it input the text and it click check and there it is uh, let me know down in the description if you have any other questions or would you like to see anything different and what would you like to see in the next video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Hit the like button, subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future videos. And of course, code down in the description so you can download it and it will have this code, the updated code in the description.